All right, here we are in Unit 12. Unit 12 is totally different from all the other units that we've done this year because it doesn't involve equation solving, but it does involve mathematical observations and specifically finding patterns. The topic for Unit 12 is sequence and series, but in Section 12.1, we're only going to talk about sequences. What is a sequence? Very simply, a sequence is a pattern of numbers that is ordered. It's an ordered pattern of numbers. Each number is called a term. You've heard that word before. I'm going to refer to each number as a term. Each number has a position or a place in the order, which we'll talk about later. And the sequence could go on forever or it could terminate. Those are the three rules or ideas for a sequence. Now, for example, we have these. Here's an example of a sequence. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. I bet you can find the pattern in those numbers. Obviously, every number is going up by 2, which would be its pattern. Here's a different sequence of numbers. 1, 3, 6, 10, 15. There is a pattern there. The first number goes up by 2, the next one up by 3, the next one up by 4, the next one up by 5, etc. During this unit, you're going to have to be good at locating patterns. Now, there are two ways to represent a sequence mathematically. This video is only going to talk about recursive formulas. The next, va next video will talk about explicit formulas. Now, what is a recursive formula? A recursive formula is a mathematical rule in which the previous term or terms are used to generate the next term. I'm going to do a couple of examples for you. If you need to pause the video, please do to write that down. And then I'm going to do the first example. All right, let's talk about mathematical notation. It says, example number one, find the first five terms of each sequence. Well, first of all, terms are always represented by the letter A, and they have a subscript. So for instance, if it's A sub 1, that would be the first number in the pattern. If it says a sub 7, that would be the seventh number in the pattern. If it says a sub n, that is referring to any number in the nth position in the pattern. So that's what that notation means. Now in our particular problem, it says a sub 1 is equal to negative 5. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a little table here. And the first column is going to be the number n, which is the position in the order of the numbers. And then the last column I'm going to call a sub n, or whatever that particular uh, number is. Now, I look at the little subscript. I see it's a 1. That means the first number in my pattern, a sub 1, is negative 5. Now in here, this is where I'm going to put my work. So I don't need to do any work for that one. Now, this in the red box is an example of a recursive formula. Because what it uses is the prior term is used to generate the new term. Now, it says, let, let's say we're looking for n equals to, or n, the second term. So that means the value of n is 2. So I put a 2 where the little n's are in this formula. And so I would get a sub 2 is equal to a sub 2 minus 1, which is really, 2 minus 1 is the first term, minus 8. So what it tells me is the second term is equal to the first term, Take away 8. Well, that's really simple. So the first term was negative 5, and what I do is I take away 8 to get the second term, and that would be negative 13. 
and this, this pattern continues. Now, if I'm going to find the third term, I'm going to start over. I'm going to use the recursive formula, which says a sub 3, if I put 3 in for n, is equal to a sub 3 minus 1, which is a sub 2 minus 8. Well, a sub 2 is negative 13, so negative 13 minus 8 is negative 21. Now, hopefully you can see that this continues, so all I do is I take the, the old term and minus 8 from it to get the new term. So the next one would be negative 21 minus 8, which is negative 29, and then the fifth and final term would be negative 29 minus 8, which is negative 37. And so in this particular box, right there in the green circle, that is the answer to the problem. Those are my first five terms. Now, the last notation that you need to know, the n value is always called the domain. That's like the x values. And the a sub n is called the range. So make note of that. These are the domains, and these values right there are the range. Go ahead and pause the video if you need to. All right, here's a different one. It says find the first five terms. So I'm going to make my table. First column is my domain. The last column is my range, which I will label right down here for you. The domain and the range. All right. So it tells me the first term, n is 1, the first term is 2. They always got to tell you the first term if they're going to do a recursive. You got to always know the first term. All right, well, the second term, I don't got to do any work for that. Here's my recursive formula. It says the second term is equal to 3 times what I put in parentheses would be the first term minus 1. Well, the first term was 2. So this formula says there's a time sign here. It says the second term is equal to 3 times 2 minus 1. 3 times 2 minus 1, that's 5. Okay, third term. Well, a sub 3 is equal to the same formula, but then if I put 3 where the little n is, 3 minus 1 is the second term minus 1. So I go back to the prior term, and I go 3 times 5, Minus 1 will give me my next term, which would be 14. And this continues. I'm going to have to do a little erasing here, so I have a little bit of room. The fourth term, a sub 4, is 3 times the third term, minus 1. So that would be 3 times 14 minus 1, which would be 41, I believe. And then finally, the fifth term would be 3 times the prior term, which is 41, minus 1. And that would be 122. And here are the first five numbers that are generated by this recursive sequence. So I hope that gives you some idea what a recursive formula is. Now, let's go backward. It says, write the recursive rule for each sequence. Well, when I write the recursive rule, the two things I need are the first term, and then I need to know how to generate the nth term from the one before it, which is n minus 1. Well, if I look at example 1, that's pretty easy. The first term is 1. Now, what's happening to the numbers? What's the pattern here? Well, it goes from 1 to 4 to 16 to 64, and pretty soon upon close inspection, you're going to notice you times by 4. So you take the prior number and times by 4. So therefore, I'm going to put a 4 in my formula, and there it is. There's my recursive formula. The nth term is 4 times the prior term. And that's my recursive formula both parts. Example 2. Again, to write a recursive formula, I need both parts. I need the first term. Well, that's easy. It's 10. 
And then I need how to generate the next term. There will always be an a sub n, and there will always be an a sub n minus 1. Well, now, what's the pattern each time? Well, that's pretty easy to see in this case. We're always adding 3 each time to the prior term. So I take the prior term, which is in the parentheses, and all I do is I add 3 to it. And there is my recursive formula. And that is one way, people, to represent a sequence. The second video will talk about a different way to represent and write mathematical equations for sequences. But if you have questions, that ends the recursive formula part.